Yeah, all right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a fun week, I promise you. We're down here on the Sabine River. Just got down here, drove from home, Fort Worth, about a six hour drive down south down here. And we were gonna bring the RV. We were gonna bring Trait and, and, and film a podcast with some of the Elite Series guys. We were gonna bring the dogs, but we had a little boo-boo. The little cable on our slide out actually broke. So we can't stay at the RV park with the RV this week. So I called a good friend of mine, a, a really cool family down here, the Leggett's. This is Red Leggett right here. He's, he's directing me. <laughs> Look at he's directing me. It hasn't rained? That's my guy right there, Red Leggett. I'm gonna miss, see him, I'm miss my girl. How about, I know you are. That was a crazy little look. Uh, I know, what a flute. We were ready to go. I had all my stuff packed up, ready, and then I go to pull that slide in. You and gotta repack. Huh? I know. Well, yeah, I had to grab all the stuff, and I forgot some of my stuff in there, so we're packing light. Yeah, like I said, this is a Leggett family. I mean, just awesome, awesome people. It's like it's it's like the Southern hospitality thing down here, but we're in Texas. It's really, <laughs> really cool. Stephanie, Red, Adam, Zach is around here somewhere. Well, he's at the lake. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's at the lake. the lake. Zach's at the lake. That's awesome. But 2015 is when I stayed here first with. Uh, Kevin Ledoux and Brandon Polinick, we all stayed here. We're a young bunch of guys and they invited us in. We didn't know what to think down here on the Sabine River. Like, that what are you, bass fishing? Yeah. <laughs> and we've been friends with them ever since. And uh, like I said, Adam and Zach are hammered, uh, not only at golfing, but fishing as well. But uh, Red can do anything with his hands and he built all this up. And storms keep hitting you guys and you guys keep we on, just keep, keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> we just keep don't worry, Steph's gonna be gone. I'll yeah. take over to cooking. Yeah. Well, it's up to him to get eat yeah. eggs and bologna. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get settled in here and I'll fill you guys here in a little bit. So thank you guys for clicking on this video once again. It's gonna be a fun week. You guys are gonna hang out with us all week long for the next seven days down here on the Sabine River. We've had tournaments here in the past. It's one of those fisheries where literally, if you find where fish live, you're going to catch them. It's not, you know, it's not about shaking a little worm and trying to get them to bite here and there. It's once you find them, you got them found and they're easy to catch. The problem is a lot of times they are miles and miles and miles. I'm talking hundreds of miles away from Orange, Texas here. And that's that's what we plan on doing here this week. So yeah, it's we're all buckled up here. We're ready to go. Uh, tomorrow we kind of have a little uh, appearance down at uh, Lake Charles Tackle, so you guys are gonna uh, ride along for that. But uh, it was a cool, smooth, easy ride down here. Longtime friends of mine, so we're all gonna be one happy family this week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This really is a very, very unique fishery. Come on with me. Let's go figure them out together. Really cool down here. A lot of bridges. Obviously, we're you know very close to the Gulf. The Gulf is right there. You got casinos over here in Louisiana. You've got all the Texas oil companies and energy companies over here to the right. So you're constantly getting these giant tankers and oil transporters all over this river system. It's pretty amazing. Giant golf course. Such a cool place down here. It really is like Florida mixed with Texas. Kind of cool. <laughs> Was I supposed to bring my boat? I don't know. I don't know, I didn't get the, I didn't get that memo. Sorry, I'm, I'm all out of black rifle cop. I'm just kidding. When you can wrap around and park with those guys today okay. and try to cross this ditch. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. I can't wait to ask that guy if he's been on any good calls lately. I love, <laughs> love, love a good cop story. Actually, if there's any cops watching this video right now, and I know you like to kind of keep it on the down low, but uh, if you got any good cop stories, quick ones, comment down below, because everyone loves a good cop story. Got all the pros in the house. All right. What's going on everyone? Sunday of Memorial Day. Hope you're having a good weekend. Myself and a bunch of other pros are here at Lake Charles Tackle, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Come on by, all these pros, myself, will all be here from 12 to four o'clock today, Sunday, Memorial Day. Social media, am I right?
happy you are so here. Much, Thank man. you. Absolutely. This is a big old shindig. You got I some know. freaking names I out know. here. Well, I mean, I, how many AOIs you got? I see one AOI, two, three, three AOIs. Yeah. And the rest of these clowns, I mean, Scott Martin, he probably begged you for him to be here. No, but, he's not here. That, oh. His camera guy showed up. Oh, nice. Everybody right keeps on. asking me where Scott is, and I'm like, uh, That's awesome, I don't know. Man. Very <laughs> uh, cool. But no, it, it, we're so excited that y'all are here. Pros just hanging out doing nothing. Look at them, they're just talking about fishing the whole time. It's amazing. Okay, so I don't know what's better the mullet or the mustache. You guys tell me. Like, they're brothers, obviously. So oh, yeah. I'm like, dude, turn around. Let me see this thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so filthy, dude. <laughs> hey, look how filthy that mustache is. <laughs> Heck yeah. That is awesome, dude. Thanks for being good sports. I love it. I love it. You guys have girlfriends or you know? You just broke up. <laughs> Damn. So he just broke up with his girlfriend. So ladies, if you're watching this, this dude's mustache is available. And then how about mullet? Is he I am about single? <laughs> Absolutely. Not for long. Not for long. Ladies, hit him up. M W K A H R S. Yes. Okay. And then you. And mine is just Christopher Cars. Christopher Cars. K A H R S. Cars. Nice. Love it. Holler at the boys, the man. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Keep it up. Just slaying out here. <laughs> what? That's a good one. These kids, man. Stay away from those crazy ones, though, okay? I appreciate you guys yeah, being yeah. here. Absolutely, out here, man. man. Thanks for having us. You guys are awesome. Took me all day. They got a lot of tackle here, but I finally found them. They've been liking the blackback shad, dude. That's like been the number one. Get her. We've been catching them on it this summer, definitely. Wow, there are some good ones on there. Yeah. What event was this from? You said three. I think it was eight, but it might be three. Hold on. Yeah, the classic in New Orleans. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three? That's the only classic he's won in 2003. I mean. Must be. Yeah, yeah hey, I'll take care of it. It's him, a 19-year-old hat. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, he so I just met Larry and Tammy. Larry has got one of my dream cars. It's a 67 Chevelle, and it's not a GTO. So the GTO yeah. and a Chevelle are kind of similar body styles, but like that 68, 69, 70 has got that different body style. This yeah. is the boxy body style that I absolutely love. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, dude. Look at the body style on this. Yeah. Larry, I, I, that thing's amazing. Yeah. Let's start this thing up. Oh my gosh. Can I let Charles in on that side? Come on. Yeah, Charles. I, oh yeah, I got you. It's got, yeah. It's got automatic that, oh, right yes. Look on the deck. Right, right here. here. This thing is awesome. I'm going to put the clutch in. Do I put the clutch in to start it? No, no, no it's automatic. Okay. okay. Oh, it is. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Headers and Flowmasters, no. the whole nine. Yeah. yeah. And he put some dump valves right here. On right, the turn downs, yeah. Turn down. Yeah. I never heard that. Yeah. You That's... smell the exhaust. I yeah, love you it. Smell it man. This it's thing is so nasty. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. 67 Chevelle. This yeah. thing is nasty. All, cool, like, all original. Yeah. Yeah. So it's originally 396, yeah. but they put a 454 in it. So yeah. any car guys out there know that the 454 is a bad boy Chevy motor. Yeah. That thing is so huge, yeah. dude. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. 454. You're one of those guys where, yeah, rain don't matter. Like, I ain't yeah, you, it's yeah, tough. you enjoy it. You yeah. enjoy That's the car. It, yeah. I'm not going to leave it in That's the car. That's amazing. Huh? That's cool, huh? I drove a yeah, uh, 67 Mustang yeah. uh, and then a 69 as well oh, wow. in high school. But yeah, that era from 67 to 69 yeah. is like, okay. you see less and less. Yeah, you're right. Larry. All right. Ain't that something? Awesome. All right, brother. We're going to go to the fun room. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey. This is awesome. I want to go take a look at the, the fun room. Yeah, Let's go check out the fun room. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go check out the fun room. Yes. 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 Dude, I see a SCAR all off the hook. SCAR, MP5s, MPXs. Oh, yes. Yes, YouTube ain't gonna like this section. Dude, can I look at that MCX spear right there? I gotta see the spear. Look, super compliant, SP5, SP5K. This is my next toy, definitely. Spear. This is awesome. This is what I'm talking Those guys could have all the tackle. This is, this is my program right here. Just the right place to Little gun cave, dude. This is amazing, man. Very cool store. 
Yeah, glad y'all made it. Right out next here. door to the tackle shop, man. It's awesome. Yeah, Appreciate nice to meet you. Thank you for showing yeah. us. Here we go. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. That Thank is. you for it right yeah. there. Thank oh, you. Oh my God. There you go. Now wrestle it up. Times. Does that hurt? Good. It hurt, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Times. yeah. I've been yeah. in these yeah. before. Oh, that's <laughs> <great. laughs> yeah. 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 Your boat or my boat? You're having a good year. I'll go in your boat. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you what it's like to win out of that thing. Yeah. At least day one. He can At least day, day one. one. Hey, can you hang up me and put me in the car? What is going on here? <laughs> uh, what have you done? Dude, I don't know. I pulled out the handcuffs and they and they they, they ran with it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they slapped them on me a little tighter before though. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, they done messed up and let me know where all the crawfish and jambalaya is. Somewhere back here. Oh, I think this is where it's at. Yeah, this is where it's at. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Film in that color right there. Get you a picture of that. Look at them big mud bugs. There's some big ones in there now. Golly. <laughs> That's a freaking monster right there. Look at that. Yeah. So what is it, uh, what's jambalaya exactly? I see it's rice and chicken. Rice, chicken, and sausage. Sausage. Pork. Yes. Mm. Awesome. Sauce. Thank so you. Much. You're welcome. Oh. Thank, so hey, thanks yeah. for coming. See you next Pleasure time. to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that was fun. It's like three hours of hanging with the boys. Thought it was a good time. I think they said uh, Matt Robertson and Brandon are supposed to have a little wrestling match. Love to stay behind for it, but we got a lot of tackle and stuff to do. It was a lot of fun handcuffing those boys together. That's <laughs> what it's all about. The camaraderie is just unbelievable with this group of guys. Good day. We got red back there. <laughs> we got sugar back there. Oh, look at him. He's awesome. You'd love this man right here. <laughs> look at him directing traffic with his earmuffs on. Red, you're the man. All right, we just got done with that pro day thing. We've got a couple groceries back here. Kind of a big evening for me. Not a big evening, but um, I got some unloading to do in my boat. So what I mean by that is I've got five graphs on my boat. I only need like two of them. So I'm gonna take some graphs out of my boat. I'm gonna take all the tackle from all the, you know, Texas adventures we've had the last couple of weeks, all my big swim baits, all my big lead, heavy tungsten out of the boat because tomorrow we fully plan on making a really long run up that Sabine River. So I'll show you all that tomorrow, but uh, for now, and I'm just gonna completely gut my boat and we'll kind of walk through it in the morning tomorrow first day of practice we're gonna be on the clock it's gonna be a long day a lot of miles traveled i fully intend on burning up 60 gallons of gas which is what capacity is in that nitro z21 xl so a little bit of that a little bit of this and then we'll be doing a little bit of that tomorrow so we're done Uh, I don't know how much how much gas I've got in here, but this thing holds 60 gallons, a little bit over 60 gallons, and I fully intend on using all of it today in practice. You know, I've always been envious of the nitro guys over the years on this body of water because they could go the farthest. There aren't any gas stations out here, zero, like no gas stations ever. So what I did last night was I literally took, I mean, all my boxes of tungsten, all my big swim baits, deep diving crankbaits, all things I'm not going to use, took them out of the boat, like literally 150 pounds of stuff out of my boat. The only necessities I have, spare prop, tools, only three graphs out of the possible five, you know, to lighten up the load. You go on my boat, there is nothing in my boat. We're gonna be light, we're gonna be stealthy, and we're gonna go so far up the Sabine River. Burn 30 gallons there, maybe even 31, 32, and then like 28 gallons back with the current. So it's gonna be a heck of an adventure today. I got my 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 iPods here, so, you know, or listening to some music going down the way, whatever it is, but it's gonna be a very, very scenic day. Hopefully it's a safe scenic day. All right, so we're pulling into the orange ramp here 
and I'm absolutely late. Look how many boats are in this parking lot already. I mean, it's 6.42, and normally, I'm the very first person in the water, especially on the first day of practice. I like to be the first guy out there, but today, I purposely kind of took my time, made sure I filled up the boat with gas and everything, because I don't want to be the first one up that river. As you look up, I mean, all the way up this river here, I mean, that is literally, I mean, way up here to there, that's literally 70 you know, 80 miles to the uh, Toledo Bend Dam right here, literally. And I'm gonna try to make it all the way up here. And if you look at just how treacherous this river is, it just sidewinds all these little sandbars and things. So there's a good chance that some of these guys who are already on the water are making their way up that river who are kind of plowing the way. If there's a lay down log, if there's an obstruction, I don't want to be the first one to find that obstruction. So I'm getting here at 6.45. We'll put the boat in the water and we'll start heading up there by about seven o'clock. And hopefully by then we'll see little bubble trails of someone in front of us. And me knowing in the back of my head, I could go farther than them because I got the most gas capacity in this in this nitro. So that's kind of the game plan. So it's not always, a, you know, I'm gonna try to finesse them behind guys and try to get these fish to bite and weigh in some, you know, bigger fish. It's not always about that. This is the type of tournament where it's just all strategy and gas and fuel consumption. And do I run far? Do I stay close? Because again, here, if you find them, they're going to bite because no one fishes for them. So it's all about finding those fish. And we're gonna try to find those jokers all the way up. Up this river where it gets really 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 nasty up there with all those sandbars and things so all right so gas gauge says it's exactly 99 percent i marked a bunch of like little oxbows off the main river and let's see the furthest one that i marked up there exactly 68 miles away that's 68 miles of this not 68 miles straight so call it like 75 80 miles See if we can make it there. <laughs> that one made me come off pad. Mark like a tenth of the way to, to where you know the very furthest spot. It's a gnarly run. 30 minutes into the run, it's at this speed, that's five hours. <laughs> Woo. And here's the thing too, like okay, so obviously this this main Sabine River is swift. It's it fluctuates and it's really dirty. So you could almost guarantee like you're not really gonna get bites on the main river. So just about any little oxbow or any little cut off the main Sabine River here will hold fish because they don't wanna live in this stuff all year long. They're just gonna live back in the backwater. So once we get to a certain point, I would say, you know, out of most people's rain, we could literally fish every single backwater and there should be bass in every single backwater. But that's the whole key, just to get out of the common person's range. Probably eight mile an hour. That is a lower unit taker right there. All right, we made it to the ramp up here. So if something happens from here on up, if we hit something or emergency or whatever, the current will push us down to this ramp so we could always pull out right here for today. obstacles you got to keep telling yourself like whenever you're running a river you always want to take it wide and take the channel swings because that's where all the deep water is but here away up here the deep water has all the trees so you take your pick when you're going through these s turns you want to go to the shallow sand like really shallow sand or deep trees so pick your right there on. exactly i picked i picked deep trees on that one but i had to shut it down because there were too many of them Smoked a log, but we're good. We don't have any vibration, no oil. 
I gotta check and see where the next backwater is because I'm almost ready to fish. <laughs> this last little stretch was pretty gnarly. Let's keep going. That was almost the end of the road. Look, I mean, look at this dump, dude. Wow. Woo. Two and a half hours into the north run, haven't made a cast yet, and we found that much water coast to coast, you know, side to side here. There's no channel really. And look at this roadblock ahead. I mean, that is a pretty bad one. We went over like two or three bad ones where we had to idle for a hundred yard. And now here's another hundred yard idle where it's just straight solid stumps. But just up here, I've got a backwater mark I want to try to get into if I can get past this. But two and a half hours in, I mean, that's a heck of a run. three hours into our trek north and we just hit a bunch of sandbars and scattered stumps and lay downs. The water got a little clearer, the current's not as strong. So I'm sitting here thinking like Toledo Bend Dam is just right up there. So like if they play with that schedule, that release schedule, I mean, you're, what are you gonna do? You're three hours up here, whether it's a big wall, away, uh, wall of water or no current at all, like you're stuck fishing it. So instead of really keying in on uh, the backwaters, I'm gonna start fishing some of this main river stuff. There's got to be some fish in, in on this main river. Um, if there's fish in the backwaters, there's definitely fish scattered along this main river. So it's real simple, just spinner bait and flipping. Just, I mean, it's really, really simple. Oh, I see the fish. Set the hook. I saw him at the spot. I pegged him to that tree and the spotted bass. Like. Whenever this satellite image that was taken, it shows like open access to some of these oxbow lakes. But right now we're not getting in that thing. And right now with the 55% gas, you know, we ran almost half of it. So 45% and just to make it, make sure we make it back to the ramp. I'm gonna call this the end of the line. So I was gonna try to get into that little backwater right there. But we passed up four or five different little oxbow lakes uh, that we'll just kind of fish our way back um, and just see, you know, what lives there. And after fishing a couple of um, outside bends on the main Sabine River, water clarity looks good, the flow looks good. But think about just whenever they release those, uh, release the dam, the water out of that dam, I mean, literally walls of water, eight, nine, 10 feet of water rises up here and just washes everything down. So if you're a bass, you don't want to live on the main Sabine River. So as we put the clues together, you know, the backwater oxbow uh, creeks are going to be, you know, where the fish live in theory. So this is the end of the line right here. I guarantee you no one else would have made it this far. So we're up here by Maryville, Texas. If you're bored uh, or if you're watching this video, uh, you know, on the toilet or something like that, look at Maryville, Texas and then look at it compared to the uh, to Orange, Texas. We're way up here. So we're gonna start making our way back now. All right, Charles has been with me for like two months now. Charles, be honest. How many times did you get scared? Honestly. Until today, <laughs> like none, but today definitely there's been a like few three times, times like, oh like shit. Like three or four times where it's like, oh shit. Like seriously. Whipping around those corners of yes. sand and Yes, logs. and seeing those ripples like that, like you know, like now you know when we stop and like actually look, those ripples are literally logs that big. So at 35 miles an hour, it'll take a dent out of your skeg. It'll probably take your skeg off. It'll bend the ears on your prop. At 45, 50 miles an hour, your whole lower unit's gone, like gone. They're that big. Untouched, baby. Oh, oh, spoke too soon. Oh, that's the problem when you're idling down current around all this stuff right here. Is you have zero control. It's like white water rafting. When you're going up, you got all the control of your rudder. Not the case going down. Ooh, that one hurt. That one popped my freaking cowling top off. Gosh, I don't know. That may have done some serious damage. 
It may have just been the skeg. We'll find out here. Look at it popped the cap off that. I should have sent it, dude. I, I shut it down and then BAM! It smoked it. Oh, we should have just sent it. Mercury's handling it like a champ. And the prop. Yeah! I can't believe I made it this far up! The scary guy in the woods says there's a lot more of those. Alright, we're good. Dude said there's a lot more of those, you think? Like, look at that right there. That's a pontoon boat on Memorial, you know, Memorial Day weekend. I'm sure they parked it there just a couple days ago on a Thursday or Friday. And here we are on Monday, Memorial Day. And that thing is high and dry. This river was flooded. I looked. It was flooded about three days ago. And now it's, it's like, it's steadily creeping down. And if you look over there, I mean, look, they got like gas cans and fishing rods. But they ain't moving for a while. Yo. Buddy, just checking in, man. How's it going? Uh, I caught a couple shorts today. I spent uh, about three, three and a half hours navigating north without making a cast. What happened was it was flooded like three, three days ago. Now it's like dropping rapidly. Like I was getting scared coming back down, actually, back down the river. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm way, I'm still way up here, but. Oh, it's brutal, dude. Brutal. I hit four of them. One of them I tomahawked so bad I thought I was stranded. It's dirty, dude. Dirty and moving and falling. Like I could, I'm looking at the bank right now and it's falling like quick. All the laydowns and th the ends of the laydowns. I mean, they should be right on them. So I'll know within 30 minutes to an hour. Nah, dude. Nah. Have we caught one keeper? Nope. Not one keeper. Nope. All right. Sounds good. Later. He just hit a stump. Did you hear that? You loop. <laughs> Let's see if this is going off then my backup 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 plan i always i know i could stay close to the ramp and catch a pretty pretty good good bag i know all the little sweet spots been here four or five times that ain't a sweet spot that's a nice one that's a nice one a limit of those will get you very far this week healthy Sabine River fish. Just slightly better than average for this place. You don't have to work very hard to catch them. It's whether you're around them or not. And that's, that's the hardest thing here. It's loaded full of bass, that's for sure. Size is the issue. See that? Wow. That's a good one. They're so strong on this river. It's a nice fish for here. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I mean, again, the tournament last time was one out of this creek, and like everyone's gonna come fish this. So if we do come up here, we'll just finesse them like we have. I mean, that is just an absolute chunk unit of a Sabine bass. Just a gnat. Dude, that thing came out hot for that thing. And I dropped it and ate it. All right, let's get out of here. I mean, you know, you get two or three guys in there and it's like pretty much done, so. How's it going, guys? I hit four logs today and I'm actually lucky to have made it back because I did 30 gallons from or from uh, the orange ramp 30 gallons all the way up I went all the way to Maryville you know where Maryville is oh, absolutely. Yeah, I hit four yeah. logs and I still have my uh, my lower unit intact so gotcha. what do we need yeah 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 throw a cushion right you there that's on and you just took it off yeah yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's just habit, because no, normally I... I got you. Yeah. Are both of them uh, charged and good to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're new. Yeah. Uh, I got a pistol. I, normally that qualifies, <laughs> right? We you got a, a horn on the boat. Yeah, a horn or a pistol. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm originally from California, and I told uh, Game Warden that in California. He kind of went like that at first. 
And then I was like, it is, really? a, is it? I, I had to use it one time. I did. I had it not, you know, not for, uh, but for a sound device. I actually called did the guy over. The oh, yeah. No, oh, just no. on the bank. Good deal. Looks good. I guess y'all have a good one now. Yep. Take her easy. Appreciate it. Oh, watch, yeah, watch out. Watch out. Don't get hooked right there. Oh, gotcha. Caught a few. But is it worth it in the tournament? I, I don't know. Because the water's falling. The, water, the water's falling like crazy. Within a day or two, you might not be able to I know. That's the problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks. with the Minn Kota, Kota Hummingbird uh, Tech. So that last little stretch is pretty gnarly, but man, I'm worn out. And I've got about 13% of fuel left. So, I mean, 60 gallons, 13% of 60. I mean, we got a couple gallons left, but we definitely accomplished what we wanted to do today. And that was go completely up there, 60 plus miles of all this number. And I'm pretty glad that our lower unit is still intact. So found some fish. Uh, got kind of, we got stopped by the local game wardens. That was fun, hanging with the boys. Uh, but no, overall, pretty good first day. Uh, gives me some time to kind of, you know, tonight, after getting my stuff fixed, it'll give me some time to kind of, you know, figure out the game plan moving forward from here. So two more days left to practice. It says the keypad's not working, so no keypad. And my card is, ate my card. Got it. Credit card info. Yeah, how about that this morning, huh? Yeah, we found out that happened yesterday when we tomahawked that one log. I mean, of the four logs we hit, that one was the worst, but prop still intact, prop shaft still intact. So we were able to make that 60 plus mile run yesterday, no problem. Today we're gonna sw uh, switch things up a little bit. Got my Raptor fixed, got my trolling motor prop fixed. Had a little issue issues there. We're gonna hop on I-10 here and go, I don't know, 25, 30 miles to the west and fish the Neches River. So yesterday we were on the Sabine, which comes out of Toledo Bend Reservoir. The Neches comes out of Sam Rayburn Reservoir. And kind of the thinking behind that is, literally when those lakes flood, fish make it through the dam and just end up in those rivers. So, you know, down here in the saltwater marsh you're just looking for the freshest water available and uh, the Neches River is the river next door so we're gonna go launch over there see what we can find Memorial Day man I, I just one of my buddies Ed I talked to every tournament you know he says he arrived at a scene yesterday 10 seconds after it happened two frantic teenagers were looking for a 13 year old boy that they were towing around on a on a tube without a life jacket and he was there with his you know, live scoping it around, help trying to find a 13 year old boy. How about that for a, for a practice day? Gosh, that's just brutal, man. Memorial Day strikes again. Like when you, when you're out here in a boat, wear your freaking life jacket, man. No matter what you're doing, fishing or boating, whatever, tubing, don't be an idiot. And that's just terrible. So well, this saltwater barrier here is, you know, on the, the kind of the drought years where you're not getting a lot of flow from Sam Rayburn through the freshwater uh, Neches River out to the Gulf. You know, when there's hardly any flow, they'll put, they'll block this. This is a saltwater barrier so that saltwater down here doesn't intrude into, you know, and create a marsh up here. But there's plenty of flow, so we're gonna kind of run this freshwater into the lower Neches River. See that dude? That was crazy. I pitched in there and that one 
that one lily pad came up. <laughs> Natchez River special. I was just gonna say, just because it looks good, it doesn't mean there are fish there. Literally, the strategy this week is finding a population of fish in a canal or on a stretch of river. Just the population is all you're looking for. I was thinking about this on the way out here. Like, everyone likes to complain about, oh, why are they taking us to the Sabine River? You know, you only catch 12 and 13, 14 inches down there. It's like every single one of these guys in the field started out bass fishing in a creek. Like, we've all started out bass fishing in creeks. And that's what this week is is we're taking our you know, $70,000 bass boats and we're going back to our roots and we're creek fishing, that's all it is. We're just fishing little creeks. So it's kind of like back in the day when you know we were learning how to fish in these small little little waterways. It's like, oh, I wish I had a, tur you know, a tournament on these small, well, we do have a tournament now and it's just a, happens to be the biggest tournament available, but it's really like a going back to your roots type of tournament. Charles doesn't even know I have one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> That's awesome. deal with the hurricanes. They're definitely a tough fish. They just don't grow. All right, here's the move. You know, we caught a lot of fish the last hour or so, but they're all, you know, seven, eight pound bags, you know, and I don't have to run this far to do that. You could do that in the Sabine River. Uh, so here's the move. Let's put it on the rack and uh, let's go way, way, way up uh, the Netches River. Uh, there's a little town called Avadale up there, and there's some little backwater ponds and things like that. But I don't want to run all the way up there. That's probably a 40 minute run, 45 minute run, treacherous run, and I don't want to do what I did yesterday and dodge all these logs. So let's try to find the pot of gold first, and then we'll try to learn how to get to the pot of gold, because that's the only thing that matters is that pot of gold, you know, up these rivers. So let's go put it on the rack, and then we'll go drive up there by truck. Ramp, boys. It's a shady ramp. But you gotta stay after it. These guys are gonna catch them. You gotta catch them better. So whatever it takes. Okay. Alright, 30 minutes into this little adventure. We're in the very back of this village creek. Some random creek in North Beaumont. Got flow and the water level looks good, but I'm like bottoming out on these sandbars here. And I haven't had a single bite on any of these little channel turns just right here in front of the ramp. So let's Let's cut this one out, let's go to the next one. It's a lot of work, man, putting it on the, on the trailer, drive 10, 15, 20, 30 miles, launch, relaunch. It's, uh, it's a lot of work that goes into this tournament right here because the playing field is so big, but let's move on. So again, you know, the strategy, and tomorrow I'm just gonna put the, you know, launch the boat at the main ramp, put the trolling motor down and just fish around the main ramp. And there are guys doing that today who are catching them, I'm sure. But, you know, the first half of practice, which is what we're in right now, I mean, you gotta do these little sends. I mean, you gotta do something that's different that'll set you apart. I mean, we haven't seen very many guys until, you know, until like that little quarter of today. When I see a lot of people, I just wanna run and get away. Cause on this place, it's, it's not that hard to do to get away from people. When you actually do find them, you want them all to yourself.
We're launching off a road right now. This isn't even a ramp. This is the road going to the ramp. It's that high. Let's see how this goes. The search continues. We've seen every water condition. Low, high, logs, rocks, sand, dirty water, kind of dirty water. The only thing we haven't seen is clean water. And I don't think you're going to find that anywhere near the Gulf. It could be a good thing. It could, it could give us access to some of these clean water oxbow areas, you know? So, yeah. You're not catching to this. And this is too fast, too high, and too dirty. This is showing like a dead end, dude. And there's water flowing through this, which means water's, uh, water's flowing through the woods. As long as we've been up here in this stretch of the Netches River for the last, I don't know, three or four hours since we launched here, this is the only time I was able to fish up against the bank because it's so flooded and then the water just goes so far back in the trees. This is the only bank or shoreline we've found in about four hours of fishing. So with that, you know, we just fish a nice little mat here. If there was a fish here, it would be just kind of in this little matted area and I flipped this and I'm not getting any bites way, way, way up the netches here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this off. We're gonna go back to the truck, we're gonna look at the map, and we're gonna relaunch somewhere else, whether it's back on the Sabine or further down one of the other bayous. Um, I'm not into this, so I'm about to drive another 15, uh, 15 miles or so back to the truck and relaunch. Oh boy. Worth it, dude. Water's high and it's making it possible to get back in this little pond right here. Satellite looks good, but we're definitely back here with the spiders. The spiders and the wasps, that's for sure. But it could be worth it. We'll see. Now we hit a roadblock here. I mean, look at that giant tree behind me. Gotta turn this joker around after going about. 50 yards into this. Spiders and wasps, man, everywhere. Come on, buddy. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> All right, we're out. <laughs> we're out. All right, I've had enough of this. I'm going back to the truck. That's it. We haven't seen a single boat like for two days in this and in these upper reaches. We had to try it, man. Went all the way up to Sabine. We went all the way to the absolute boundary line in the Netches here. So now we switch gears and we go fish the lower ends where there's gonna be more fishing pressure. There's definitely more fish, but you know, you're just kind of dealing with, you know, the other competitors. So it was nice not seeing any of the guys and any of this stuff, but it was definitely worth a shot coming up here. Real quick, back at the house here before I go launch uh, in orange. I have to grab my Apex, which is my Mega Live unit. You know, thinking behind that is around the launch ramp every single year, guys do well, but it gets absolutely hammered. So, you know, using Mega Live and Mega 360, trying to fish just a little bit further off the bank because everyone just goes down the bank and throws at the bank. I'm gonna put this back on just so it allows me to see things that are off the bank. And that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. Charlie, you guys are gonna stay here. I'm gonna roll with the chesty. So it's gonna be kind of boring fishing around the ramp, but I'm gonna try to pick up and find a couple of areas just off the bank where I could really expand on it later on in the week. Oh, good morning. Day three of practice here. I decided to go all the way back up the Sabine River. This is the only launch ramp to launch at. Uh, it's at one of the bridges here. And that first day when I came through here, when the water was high, I noticed this launch ramp. There was zero sand on this launch ramp. You know, it was Memorial Day. There was boats all through here. You know, they were launching here no problem. All the locals having a good time, having fun. As I'm backing down the ramp here, look how much this water has fallen. 
And remember, we hit four different logs underneath the water. I jacked up my skeg. I was pretty lucky to make it. I mean, look at this. Look at the sand on this launch ramp right here. So when we passed by, there was zero sand on this launch ramp, which is way, way, way up here. Like this is where the water level was. And look how much it's fallen. So it's probably fallen probably four feet or so, maybe even more, but you could hardly even launch your boat in this sand right here. So I wanted to come up here and check this out. It was only a 20 minute drive by truck. Uh, I was gonna launch my boat and try to, you know, get back into some of those other ponds and things, but I'm just gonna go ahead and ride it off and say, hey, I, I saw what I needed to see. I'm not gonna launch my boat and tear up, uh, you know, the rest of my stuff here. So I know what's up there. I'm gonna keep an eye on the water gauge there. And if the water levels have a little bit of an upward spike during the tournament, then I'll go ahead and come up here and just fish it during the tournament. You know, there's four different dudes, four different competitors that have launched here this morning. And I guarantee you one of them ain't gonna come back here with an intact lower unit because it is that treacherous. Uh, there was a report yesterday that one of the guys smoked a log up here and, uh, and chopped off his lower unit. So I don't want that to be me today. So instead of launching my boat here, all the way up the North Sabine, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the lower Sabine and just kind of go to work on them closer to the launch ramp. So that's an update for day three here. Pretty gnarly seeing that water fall like that. Oh boy, it is heating up. Here we are, the second half of the third day of practice. And uh, you know, this morning I went out alone. I was running and gunning a couple different launch ramps. You know, of course I went and checked that that uh, that North Sabine River launch ramp, and the water was way low. So I scrammed that idea, went back to the to the river next door, which is the Neches, and caught one really nice one, re really really nice one, and a couple other little ones. So here we are. We're gonna finish our practice period strong, just kind of around the launch ramp here. And every single year we come here, there are about 30% of the top 10, you know, that fish just right around here. And it's because of one reason, all of the tournaments go out of that ramp right there. So this, this place is constantly getting populated with largemouth bass. So we're just gonna beep off around here and, uh, and fish everything that looks obvious, kind of finesse them a little bit and uh, see if we could just find a couple little areas where fish are holding. Swim jig is very, very blue crabby. And there's a lot of blue crabs in this system. Guggen quarter ounce. I think it's a grass hero, but the greens, oranges, and blues with a little, it's gotta have a little bit of pearl and white in it too, because those crabs are real white on the bottom side. <laughs> oh, there she goes. That's my bad, 13. That's my bad. <laughs> Blew my rod up on this gator. I tried to boat flip him, but he's no. Now I'm left with the wind chime. That was my bad. I high stick the heck out of that gator. I'm telling you, this little swim jig, like a lot of guys aren't throwing this exact one. But if you ever look at a blue crab, it's got a very, very green pumpkin back, which is that right there. And it's got orange sides, which is that right there. And it's got a white belly, which is that right there. And you top it off with a little bit of blue, a little blue baby trailer. I mean, that is a freaking blue crab right there. Those are good ones. That's the most bites I've had in a one hour stretch. There's something to that swim jig. As sad as that sound, but a limit of those is above average. A little swim jig, man, they like it. Looks just like a blue crab. All right, let's stop setting the hook. I think what the move is, here's the move. Stay around here, because there's a lot of release fish and there's some good fish down here. I've had some good finishes on that bank, just around that corner. I'll save it for the tournament, but I think the move is to stay local and to stay on top, with my phone, stay on top of that generation up there. If Toledo Bend starts dumping water, that's my cue to go up the river and fish those backwaters we fished on that first day. 
I think I think that's the move. That's a pretty solid game plan. As practice is kind of winding down, that's you know that's that's a game plan that's getting feeling more and more solid. That field looks identical. See the blue, the green pumpkins, the white. Look at that. It's got white to it. I mean that is it. I'm telling you, that's that's the deal. I'm gonna have to ask the Scott if he's got any more of those. I've only got one, but you're able to throw it on braids, so that's good. This was the last little backwater I wanted to check. There's a little inflow here. This is the cleanest water I've seen, but we've got no bites here. So there's a giant cell, giant storm popping up. I saw a little bolt of lightning. We're about to get dumped on. So with that, I'm about to call it practice. That's it, man. We went all the way up the Sabine River. We went all the way up the Neches River. We saw high water. We saw low water, caught a bunch of fish. And I think the whole kind of key this week is to keep a bait wet. And uh, that little swim jig I figured out late, that little crab imitating swim jig man every time I had it in the water it seems like I had a bite every 10-15 minutes so this is one of those tournaments where you have to put yourself in areas where largemouth bass live and try to get lucky with three and four pound big ones Thank you guys for hanging out with us. That was an awesome practice period. We covered so much water. With that, we're, we're out of here. My little alligator buddy is just chilling. Look at that little gator head right there. It's like those ones you see in the gas stations. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with us all through practice. We had a blast. There was plenty to see. And uh, till next time, I'm out. <laughs> Psych, later. You got me. Yeah. <laughs>